Squeeze everything in your body. Exhale with a big ass scream. Scream! Hi, I'm Danny Murphy. And I'm Evan Real. And wow, Evan, Katie Maloney kept everybody on their toes this week on Vanderpump Rules. I think this probably is one of the best episodes of the season so far. Oh my, there was so much going on. Like, I'm still processing it all, but obviously Katie Maloney was truly the star. I feel like she was in the mix, in the mix in like every single scene. Oh, she involved. was in the mix on the max. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's the thing. Katie was having such a great episode until that last scene when Brock dropped the bomb that apparently she's hooking up with Max. You missed it. What happened? Max and Katie went home and made out? No, like, <laughs> touch beepies. If you guys don't remember Max, Max Boyens is from several seasons of Vanderpump Rules ago. It was during that season where they did the massive cast shakeup where they added Dana and this girl and that girl and that dude. And it ended up being like half of them were fired because most of them were racist, including Max. He had some racist tweets and mm -hmm. Bravo gave him the chop. But Katie didn't give him the chop. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know what she gave. I don't know what who gave who what. All I know is everybody gave Sheena find my friend access, and that's how some truths came out. I, I'm not gonna go in who gave who what. I, I do. I can't believe that it was so um, uh, endearing slash alarming that Sheena keeps track of. I think she said 65 people. Like it's nice to know that she cares about where her friends are. Wait, what that's such doing. a Taurus vibe. I want all my friends' locations, and they're always like, "Why do you care?" I'm like, "Why do you care that I care?" Right. I'm like, right. what are you up to? I'm like, this well, isn't, I'll never hold anything against you. And because you find out things like this. Right. And then, right. So like, what would this episode have been had Sheena not been keeping tabs? If yeah. anything, she's like Nancy Drew. And we we love a Bravo celebrity who, you know, taps into her, her inner Nancy Drew. It's very Megan King. I feel like Megan oh. King probably has like 6,500 people's locations. She probably was so proud of Sheena and I like tapping into find my friends a little bit more than tapping into whatever Sandoval was tapping into while like exp the, the, I feel Lala's face summed it up for all of us watching that of her just like why did I walk in here again <laughs> I was so uncomfortable watching it it really truly looked like an exorcism, which honestly, after like the year that Sandoval has had like an exorcism might actually be just what the doctor ordered. But I think that what he likened this experience to was uh, an emotional orgasm, just kind of like letting out whatever angst and anger he's been holding onto for the past year. And I do think that when Lala walked into the room and her like Born star style, Mary Jane's, her oversized camo hoodie. It was giving like, it was giving like Anna Nicole like on the feet, but like Duck Dynasty on the chest. It was giving, do you know Bass Pro Shop? Yes. Yeah, Cause there's a, okay. there's one, I don't know if they all look like that in Memphis, the triangle, the pyramid. Cause mm -hmm. she had the pyramid purse. I really feel she was like, this is my mood board for the day. It was it was more Lauren, not Lala. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> to totally. But I mean, so obviously she was wearing what she was wearing, and it was a look. But like you said, the look on her face, Danny, that is what that was the the best accessory because it was just telling us everything that we needed to know, which was Lala. I I think regretted arriving to Sandal's house for a minute, but then she kind of like got in the groove. She uh, got a latte. Yeah, got, got one of his famous lattes and they chatted in the backyard for a bit. And it was, you know, as Lala described to Ariana later in the episode, it was a fabulous conversation. It was a productive conversation, mm -hmm. but I don't think productive for their friendship. I think this is like the beginning of the end. Because as we know, they're not getting along right now. Oh, this, not, I think this is what started it. I 100% because I do feel it's kind of like Lala's like, finally, someone lets me talk about Randall. Thank you, Sandoval. Like she's just waiting for someone to listen to her on a couch, which I get. I get why not everybody wants to, but I get that Sandoval and her were going a little bit back and forth. So I feel this definitely is some of the tension between Lala and uh, Ariana. And I wonder too, because when Lala also heard the reveal from Schwartz about the Sheena Schwartz kiss, makeout level layer, I did not expect Katie to 
be as upset with Sheena. For some reason, I kind of was like, oh, at this point, everything's water under the bridge. I had smoothies at Creation with um, Shortsy. He drops on me that a few years ago, Sheena and I made out in Vegas. What? What the actual Katie, I mean, to her, I get why also. She really wasn't vibing with Sheena after this, so I think this really starts the Lala Sheena versus Katie Ariana complete divide because it's just feuding all around. What did you think about all that Shishu Vegas situation? Well, what I thought was so interesting is when Lala was sort of figuring out who should I talk to first, Katie who should or I run to? Yeah. Sheena. <laughs> and she ultimately chose Katie over talking to Sheena first. And what she said in the confessional is like, I didn't want to give Sheena mm -hmm. time to paint a pretty picture, which I thought was very interesting. And and honestly, I don't think that this whole situation would have been as dramatic had she gone to uh, mm -hmm. Sheena first to let Sheena paint her Monet or whatever it is that she was going to paint. Because Sheena really does have a way of um interpreting Spins. reality the shape and, spin, yes and as sheena was explaining her side of the situation to katie i you know i like i kind of bought it the, the part where i really agreed with sheena is like i was in the beginning of my engagement with shay and you and uh schwartzy were doing your thing and this kiss wasn't a make out it was kind of like a weird awkward interaction kind of thing and I didn't tell you it because I didn't want to, you know, get in the way of your happily ever after with Schwartz. Like she said, like she was oh, rooting for the What bought I mean... me more? Because I didn't buy that. Sorry, oh. Sheena. <laughs> what I bought more was when Sheena was like, I knew you would kill me because you hated me then. Because I'm well, like, Sheena's like, yeah, why would I tell you during peak right. Tequila Katie? And that's the thing too. It's like, we know that Sheena and Katie's relationship has been fraught for so many years, especially during the 2013 of it all. Those girls did not get along. So yeah. Sheena probably, you know, in 2024, is like, I didn't want to ruin your happily ever after. But also, like, in 2013, it was probably like, why the, I don't owe you anything because you're, many... you're witch in a wheel against me. And I, what do I have to, like, no, no, ma'am. How many Fs do I give? <laughs> But it's pro right, like, but I, I think that it's probably such a punch in the gut to Katie now because she and Sheena have really gone back and forth, worked so hard to repair their friendship. And it's like, wow, through all of the work that we put in together, somehow no one told me about this. Do you think that, do you think that Ariana knew? That's where my head I, is going. If she I was think there. Ariana knew. I, think I think Ariana, Ariana knew. knew. I think she knew. I think Ariana knew. I think Sheena's mom knew. I think the entire cheer team that they went to watch knew. You know what I mean? I think everyone probably knew. Yeah. Do you know what Ariana also knew? Is that she was not going to give Tom Sandoval the time oh. of... How awkward was that when he came... I mean, awkward, but also amazing. Like, like Ariana, like, truly was, like, a statue. Like, she was, like, playing dead like a dog. Yes. She looked at Medusa. Yeah. It was full on done. And especially after the whole doggy vet situation, I understand. I think Sandoval's very lucky she gave him silence and not full rage, which I think she wanted to do. So, yes. I mean, I am curious to see <clears throat> as the season goes on, if they have any more interactions on camera. I honestly don't really think so. What I am sad about is that we'll never see awkward interactions between Candace and Robin again, because Potomac, we're dropping like flies. I know, it's so, I honestly, I was really not expecting Candace to be the first Potomac girl to exit after the season. I kind of figured that- After she talked to you th about the exit plan, I thought it would be in a year or two. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be so soon. So like, yeah, I, I, I spent the day with Candace in LA not too long ago, like maybe just a month and a half ago. And, you know, she's pursuing music and she's got her eye on the, on the Grammy. And I was like, are, is there ever a, a plan or intention to one day leave reality TV and focus on music altogether? And she was like, yeah, of course there's a plan. Not just yet. I'm still enjoying myself. But, you know, in the future, one day, Cardi B style, we can try and make that like love and hip hop to Grammy winner trajectory happen. But yeah, I wasn't expecting expecting it to be this soon. And Do then I'm think? also... Oh, what was that? No, I was just going to say, I'm also surprised that 
Robin's departure is coming in tandem because those were two girls who couldn't get along, but maybe they just canceled each other out. I feel maybe it was a cancel out. What I feel maybe happened is because they Andy really wanted some resolution at this reunion that we haven't even seen yet. So it's also LOL all this news before we even see what went down there. But I think we can assume, as Dorinda would say, not well, B, like how the reunion went, where I think they kind of were like, all right, so still no one's talking. We're going to have to like move and shake some things around. I feel it's kind of like Karen and Giselle are going to be on. They're like Kyle Richards and Teresa. Like Karen and Giselle are going to be on Potomac. So if Candace isn't talking to Giselle, goodbye. And But Giselle, we got to have you get on a little bit less comfy territory. So we're going to lose your BFF to kind of see what goes on. And I kind of think this is a... And I think even production reported to Deadline in the end of the goodbyes that we're going to be seeing from RHOP mm. this year. What? Where do you think this leaves Wendy? On her YouTube show, which I'm excited what? for because I love it because I, I watch some episodes. I feel it's hard because Wendy kind of, I think, especially this... Well, she was good having some back and forth with NECA. Well, I don't think I don't think NECA. I don't think we're going to be getting that many updates about NECA moving forward on Potomac. You know what I mean? I feel it is going to be Giselle, Karen, Ashley. Ash. I hope Ashley. A lot of people are thinking Ashley might be out, especially after people are divided. If she, the part she played in the Deborah debacle I, I don't know i think it's going to be really interesting to see what goes on there what are your predictions for the reunion or what are you most looking forward to the girls sort of hashing out i have i have my one thing that i really want to dive into more and i want to see if it's the same thing as you wait what is yours okay after watching this episode of vanderpump rules and this season of The Real Housewives of Potomac uh -huh. and last season of Selling Sunset. Okay. I need to discuss the crackhead epidemic going on in reality TV. And it's not that people are using crack, it's that people are accusing people of doing crack. Yes. And I don't know how it has become a trend, but <laughs> Katie accused Joe of doing crack. Uh, Chrishell accused uh, Nicole of doing crack on Selling Sunset. and. The same for Dr. Wendy accusing NECA of doing crack. And it's like, they say it like just so randomly. Casually. No evidence. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just want to know where like Wendy got that. She'll tell you. I'm sure if I'm sure she want to know. I, I am very curious about what goes on. I think it's going to be a very unproductive reunion, but a very exciting one to watch probably because I can't, I feel no one made any amends. Especially after such an intense... You know who came out on top, I feel, after this season? She had oh. some drama? Our girl, Miss Mia. Oh, Mia, 100%. It, this was Mia's oh, season. Oh, she's staying, too. Mia's staying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mia's definitely staying after this season. This was, a, so, this was honestly kind of like a landmark season for her. Mm -hmm. Like, even though a lot of people considered the season of Potomac the, like it's snooziest or maybe the worst, um, it's been a great season for Mia. We've seen so much of her, and I truly think that her Gordon situation is so, it was so compelling. That last like 20 minutes of the finale was like so freaking good. I could have done like a two part Peacock docuseries on that. Please. So, so good. Speaking of wanting more of people's drama, a little birdie told you that someone is no longer tardy for the party and coming back to our screens. Yes, yes. Okay, so Kim Zolciak is trying to RSVP back into the world of reality TV. She has a, a new show in the early stages of development. That's what uh, okay. sources were telling me. Uh, it's not clear what the show will be about, uh, where it will land. She's in talks with several streamers and networks. Okay. But Danny, like, did you see what this show is tentatively titled? Yes. To hell and back, cool. right? to hell and back which honestly i i kind of love it because it's that is really kind of a summation of what we've seen kim zolciak go through with all her financial woes and her this crazy divorce with croy bierman so i mean i don't know about you i would would i would 100 percent watch the show oh. i also do kind of like how to hell and back with kim zolciak kind of like i kind of like that oh, kinda, she's it's very like we tv to me we tv oh we tv you said 
Yeah, doesn't it feel kind of like Wii TV to you? It's screaming Mama June, yes. And I mean that as a, I mean that as a captivating because, I mean, we're <laughs> keeping up to date with her. It just really does track. And I feel a lot of people have been having a lot of questions about Kim Zolciak. So while we don't know when that's coming out, we do know, and this ties into reality TV, that Cowboy Carter is out tomorrow. Or to yeah. midnight tonight, yes. I am so I freaking excited, Danny. This is gonna be so good. Like I'm 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 not the biggest country person, but mm-hmm. for Beyonce I am the oh. biggest country person. You know what I mean? Like I yeah, I for Beyonce I will get blisters from cowboy boots. Like I, I don't know where I don't know what about I will find them. I don't know if DSW has them. I will try to purchase them though. Yes. Well while we're all excited for the new Beyonce album that's dropping this week, I chatted a little bit with Lisa Milan from the Real Housewives of Dubai. And season two is coming out, not not anytime super soon. It's coming out in June. But I chatted with her all about her business, Mina Rowe, her maternity line that she designed, and how she got Beyonce to wear pieces from her maternity mm-hmm. line, which is amazing. But then Beyonce also kind of came up because <laughs> apparently Beyonce is causing drama on season two of The Real Housewives of Dubai, which I don't know if you guys remember, you probably remember because the videos were everywhere on social media, but Beyonce had this big, massive show it's in Dubai. where the Drunken Love riff was born. Yes, yeah, when she's like on, on that little, uh, the, what is that, like a rising pillar kind of thing? Ow. Like, what? Yeah, no, it looked like such an epic show, and most of the Dubai cast was there to celebrate uh, Beyonce and all her queendom, but apparently there was some drama about where people were sitting, who was in the VIP section, Mm -hmm. so I don't know, she gave us a little tease about what to expect from the next season of Dubai and how... Queen B gets involved. You know you're that B when you cause all this conversation. Do you feel like, and I know that we have months to go before we see season two of The Real Housewives of Dubai, did, but did you yeah. feel like you wrapped up that season feeling like you were winning? Like, do you feel good about this upcoming season? So I'll say this. Season one, I feel I not told the line. I've always been myself, but I think I was kind of like, Okay, let's see how everybody's going to receive this, you know? Um, Season two, I was like, no, you're going to get Lisa and Milan. Like, we're both showing up for work. (laughs) And I think, you know, that ruffled a lot of feathers, sadly. However, um, it's a good season. Did it end the way that I wanted it to? You're going to have to tune in to see. But I'll, I'll say season two is explosive. Like, if if we're not in the millions for views and, like, I'd be shocked, put it that way. I think season two is so epic. We have a new housewife. She's a ball of fire. We have, you know, other big energies and personalities um, still on board. And it's, it's pretty good. Oh, I love that. And fans got a taste of it at BravoCon. There was a screening yes. of episode one which created a lot of buzz what was your reaction to the fan reaction that must have been so fun you know because we haven't seen you guys on tv for so long it probably was a lot of fun just to hear the excitement from the people it was so fun we had such a positive reaction which we we were kind of expecting to be honest because we were like we wrapped and we were like oh my god oh my god While filming, it was draining, I'm not going to lie. And while you're going through the motions, it was not fun. You know, we had really fun moments, but we really had some tough times. And so when you're in the process, it's like, oh, my God, like this is this is getting to be a lot. But when you're on the outside and, you know, you look back, you're like, you know what? I've grown from that. That has helped me in some way. And I'm not talking to that bitch anymore, you know? Oh so man. It's like a whole it's like a whole process, but the fans reaction at BravoCon was like, okay, this was all worth it. What is it like sort of experiencing that span of time between wrapping filming and the premiere? Like are you are you anxious? Are you excited? The thing I feel like what I would feel like if I was a real housewife is yeah. I would be so anxious to see what people say about me in confessionals because you experience the season the way you, you thought you've experienced it. And then to see yeah. people talk about you or narrate certain scenes from a totally different perspective. Different like, perspective, yeah. I think that's that is the hardest part. I think 
hearing people's confessions. I think the confessionals, I think, is usually that causes the drama more than what actually happened in the scene. It's hearing like people and their thoughts and their shade and all of it. You know, did you have my back? Did you not have my back? Like, why would you feel like that? Why couldn't you pick up the phone and call me? You know, but it's, it's, it's all a process and it's just what it comes with. Right. So what, like what I always said to the girls, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just someone's opinion, you know, and as much as it's painful, because even for me, like, girl, don't call me at two o'clock in the morning when you just watch the see the the episode to scream in my ear. Like, that's just how I feel. That's just how I felt. You know, like, let's talk about it at the reunion. <laughs> right. Who do you think will, have, if you could say, who do you think will have the most apologizing to do for the Dubai season two reunion? Uh, the new girl. Her and her and Ayan, I think. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, some sorry. Actually, I put before. Ayan. I put Ayan number one. Ayan has a lot of. I think so. Before I let you go, Lisa, I just remembered that in a, the teaser for season two, there's like drama about that big Beyonce show in Dubai yeah. that she did. What if you could just like sum it up? It's like how the hell is like Beyonce starting drama on the Real Housewives of Dubai? Well, I'll say this, you know, there's different levels and tiers of drama, right? You know, it's top tier when the drama is about Beyonce and where we're seated. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that is luxury, baby. Like That's Dubai. Everything is bigger and better in Dubai. Oh, I love it. Well, that is a perfect place to end it, Lisa. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much. This was so fun. I always enjoy seeing you. It's always such a blast.